Sturbrook Community Center just across from Maritime Electric. And, uh, and, uh, but it's still, we're still going to, Sister Wicket and I are still going to um, uh, take care of the blunt of it as well. And uh, just want it to be a night of blessing to the church and a night of thanksgiving, even though it's at Christmas. And so, and so just a little change of venue, but the, the mantra is going to stay the same. And uh, we're just thankful. And so my neighbors are thankful that I made that change as well. And, uh, and anyway, so hey, thank you for your patience and all this moving around. I told someone it's been the craziest year for trying to get a Christmas banquet nailed down and plans. It's just been a weird kind of type scenario. Amen. Well, tonight I'm going to... It's a good thing you didn't jump in, Brother Nathaniel, because I don't know what it is about this last lesson of this Revelation series, but the Lord has just kind of... I finally just kind of relented and said, God, I'll just leave it there on the desk, and when you're ready for me to preach, you just tell me to preach it, because I've tried the last several weeks, and he just keeps changing my direction. And uh, so today I'm going to turn to Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to start in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. And uh, wasn't that a great move for the presence of the Lord last Sunday night? Amen. The presence of the Lord was so rich in this place. Amen. Brother Green, amen, ministered. Kind of, I, I don't feel bad. He drove, he drove home Sunday night, but I didn't know if it was so bad because he was flying out to San Diego. And so he went from snowstorm and, and, and maybe a little about zero, and I'm sure he is uh, enjoy, enjoying sunshine and mid to upper 20s I'm sure so amen but thank you thank you for responding thank you for allowing the Holy Ghost to move so that's what it's all about it's not just about having a good service it's about God ministering to his people and I appreciate that tonight amen Matthew chapter 5 I guess it works really well if I actually go to Matthew chapter 5 Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. And it says this. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be able, or sorry, that ye may be the children of, of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise. I like that. He maketh his son. <laughs> it's not the son. It's his son. It takes a little ownership there. I like that. You notice it's red letter edition here too. So it's not just somebody else speaking. This is God saying this. It's his son. <laughs> I love that. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if ye salute your brethren, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans do so. And then he ends it off with this. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. It's kind of like the epic good versus evil <laughs> premise here. And I just, I want to preach a little while tonight on this simple subject. When will the good win? When will the good win. You know, it's like the old saying, the nice guy always finishes last. When will the good win? 
Lord Jesus, I thank you for your presence. Lord God, there's a unique, unique spirit in this place tonight, Lord. It's not a regular Tuesday night. It's not a hype, but Lord, I feel the pr your presence moving in this place right now. It's Lord, I pray that you would overshadow us tonight. Lord, that your anointing, that your spirit would touch, which would strengthen us, which would uplift us. Lord, give us an encouraging word tonight. Lord, let our heart be set afire to do your will and to fulfill your perfect purpose tonight. And Lord God, I give you praise and glory and adoration tonight in this place. I just feel the Holy Ghost right now. Let's, let's just lift our hearts, our hands, our spirit to the Lord right now. Lord, in the name of the Lord, there's just a solemn presence of the Lord just flow into this place right now. Kika talabaha yikata. Oh, Lord, we need your anointing. Lord, we need your spirit to lead us and guide us and direct us right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I magnify you, Lord. I glorify you, Jesus. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost flow. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. It's an epic, it's an epic battle. The old good versus evil. Uh, you know, sometimes we get caught up in, the, in, in God versus the devil. It's not God versus the devil. The devil's not an equal to God. Hey, Amen. It's, it's, it's God on his own and the devil versus the church. <laughs> and it's a battle. It's a, it's a, and, and we face evil every day. You can't help but look in the news or look uh, and really almost on down your street and see evil. Uh, of some form and of some uh, sense. Uh, let me just stop here real quick. It's good to see Neil and Rachel here tonight. Hey, Amen. I, I, you know, just remember them in prayer over the next uh, little while as I'm sure things are in motion and I haven't ta got a chance to talk yet. But the Lord would just encourage them and uplift them and strengthen them. I know we all have been, but uh, pastor's forgetful and he's already into his message before he remembered. So... Amen. But there is that good versus evil, that, that awareness that, that we desire to be good, but we war in the, in, against evil, and evil tries to overcome good, and tries to block out the good, the light, the, the presence of God. That, and, and sometimes we can get into the place where we say, when will the good win? When will the good really overcome evil? When, when will, I, you know, and, and we look towards, and you know, and we're in the Revelation series, and, and uh, it's, we got one lesson left, and Lord wills, we'll get it sometime. But, you know, we think of the Armageddon. We think of the triumphant uh, uh, display and, and, and final defeat of the enemy of this world and he's cast into outer darkness and, and, uh, and, and, and he's, you know, the, the victory of victories, good, finally overshadowing evil. And there's no, uh, there's no coming back. It's just, that's the way. And it's like we feel like sometimes that good just kind of maintains until that day, till that time, till that moment when God finally does it. But I, I really don't feel tonight, I feel like God just kind of whispered in my spirit that we don't have to live in the shadow 
of evil. Good is not something that we just endure until the and, until God finally takes care of evil for good. That's why the Lord in the Lord's prayer. You remember how he ended it up? He said, "Lord," he said, um, oh, "Let me see. Let me. I got to say the whole thing. I can't start it mid time, mid uh, sentence." He said, our, "Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as." We forgive them that trespass against us. What is that? Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. In other words, for why? Because thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, you can deliver me from evil because it's your kingdom. The glory belongs to you, and it's not just today, but it's going to be forever. So in other words, I don't have to wait till Armageddon to have victory over evil. Amen. I believe that good can have a very large display of victory over the evil of this world because the Lord desires. This is interesting. The Lord told us to pray that way because the Lord desired for God good to eclipse evil. He, it was never that evil was to be prominent. I know that the evil of this world is going to get worse and worse, but that doesn't mean that the church and good gets more dim and more dim. There's a reason why the Antichrist is going to be happy that the church is gone because the good of the church, amen, that light in darkness is, is going to be the most annoying thing in the world to him. It's that alarm clock in the next room at the hotel that someone set and just keeps going off at five in the morning when you're on vacation. Amen. It just annoys and won't let go. It just pushes and pushes and pushes. And, and that's what the church should be. When the enemy is comfortable, it, 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 that, that puts the church in a place where, 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 where we're not fulfilling the will and fulfilling the purpose of God. And so God said, I want to show you, I want to show you right in the, how when you pray, your desire should be, Lord, I want you to deliver me from evil. It's not just me. Lord, deliver my family from evil. Del See, sometimes we can just get a just me view of the scripture. Everybody prays that, but it's not just me. I pray that, Lord, deliver my family from evil. Because you know what? Fa evil comes against my family. I pray, Lord, deliver my church family from evil. Because I know that he's, a, he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Evil is trying to devour the church. It's trying to devour whoever it can. So when I pray, deliver them from evil, I believe that evil can be defeated. Right. Brother Green talked about fear. And sometimes we can be so afraid of evil. That we forget about the power of the good that God has put within our heart and within our soul and within our spirit. Amen. God has such a view of it and God has such an unbelievable approach to it. As a matter of fact, he said, I'm going to give you some precepts or, or, or some direction and some examples to defeat evil. And the first thing he did in Matthew chapter 5 verse 44, he said, I'm going to teach you the, some principles. Principles here. There's a principle of good that will defeat evil. I want you to know when God gives you a principle and when and when you see it in red letters, this is God talking. Do we believe in the oneness of God? Do we believe that in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily? Then if he is speaking and if he's if it's in the word of God, it is. I don't know about you, but I sometimes just like to go through and read the red letters. Because that, that is, the, that is you can just put quotations around everything, said God. And he says, I want you to have victory over evil. And so he said unto them, and it started in verse 44, he said, I say unto you, love your enemies. He gives four things that you need to do to overcome evil evil. Four things. He teaches. These are principles that God teaches you. Four things. He says, love them, bless them, do good, and pray for them. Sure. 
It's not just love anybody, it's, it's love your enemies. Love the evil one. Le love, love. Oh, let's just lo look at it. It says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Go, if I skip down to verse 46, it says, for if I love them which love you, what reward is he? It's easy to love some people. If somebody is if somebody's nice and you get along good with them, you know what? It's easy to love. It's easy to let the love of God flow out of you. But when it starts to be someone who comes against you, and, 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 and the scripture especially uh, likens it to an enemy. It's not even someone that you just don't like. It's somebody who is your mortal enemy. And God says, love them. See, this is why, this is why I believe that good so many times loses to evil. Because we are unwilling to accept and do what God has laid out for us. It's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, Robitussin. You know, it, it's, they say, you know, it tastes terrible, but it works. That's their slogan. It tastes terrible, but it works. God said, I'm going to give you some Robitussin to defeat evil. Robitussin type approach. And see, I don't know about you. When I grew up, it wasn't Robitussin. It was green trimenic. Does anyone know what I'm talking about with the green trimenic? Oh, I would rather have died than taken that green trimenic. I remember as a kid weeping and crying and uh, no mercy. You know what? I can sometimes when I hear my kids coughing at night, I'll close my eyes and when I do, I see the, the green trimenic on that big tablespoon coming towards me. See, terrible. But I knew that if I, I guess I knew it, but I didn't like it. But I knew that if I, if I had embraced that, that I would feel better. I would, I would live better. I, I would be able to overcome. And sometimes with the things, the principle, that I told God, I don't want to preach this. This is not fun to preach. But, 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 but he said, you know what? The, the reason so much in our society and even creeping in the church today that evil seems so empowered is the church sometimes is not willing to step to the place of submission to the direction of God. God said, love your enemy." Think about that for a minute. You want to defeat evil, God says love them. That doesn't, make any, that doesn't make any sense to me. But he says love them. As a matter of fact, he says bless them, then curse you. You know what? Somebody is nasty and, and they have a need. Sometimes the hardest people to help are those that are the nastiest to you. And then they have a need and you're like, mm, I ain't doing... I, you know what, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I just, I, no way. I don't want to have a friend of mine that'd say, I wouldn't spit on them if they're on fire. You know, and, and, and we laugh, but we, so we, we, we allow those things to creep into our spirit. It says, bless them that curse you. I wish I had time, but it says, do good to them that hate you. That, not, that, not just that don't like you. They hate you. He says, smile and do good to them. Why? Because I want good to triumph over evil. And I don't understand exactly how loving my neighbor does it. I don't exactly understand completely how blessing them that curse me do it. I don't understand exactly how doing good to them that hate me do it. But I know that God said if you'll do it. Good will overcome. Good will prevail. 
And then he said, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Lord, and why are we praying that way? That ye may be, or sorry, that ye may be the, ch the children of your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and do good, and, and, and or sorry, the evil and on the, on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Amen. God's said if you want to be able to overcome the evil in your life the enemies in your life the things that are plaguing you in your life he said you love them you bless them you do good to them and you pray for them amen i believe tonight that when you begin to implore these things there is something that begins to break in the spirit that says god i'm going to do good no matter what i'm going to do what in what is in accordance to your word. I don't care what they do to me. I'm going to love them. I don't care what they do to me. I'm going to bless them. I don't care what they say. I'm going to do good to them. And as a matter of fact, I don't care how rude or ignorant or hurtful they are. I'm going to pray for them every single day. Why? Because I want good to win. Think about that for a while. I want good to win. I want the good to begin to flow. I want God's presence and God's testimony. Amen. I want the spirit of the Lord to move. He said, you do it. You love them. You bless them. You do good. You pray for them. And he said, you'll become more like me. He said, you'll be, per he said, be ye therefore perfect, even as the father, which in other words, it's the same thing. Be ye holy for I am holy. Do you realize that that's, that's a holiness scripture? That's just as much a holiness scripture as our hair and, 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 our, and, our, and our dress and, and, and all of those aspects. That is just as much a holiness scripture. Hey Amen. The, the how I, I, I got, as I was in my office and I was saying, Lord, let me preach Revelation. I want to preach Revelation. He said, no, go out there and preach this. Why? Because he said, I want good to prevail. Good to prevail, unity to prevail. Amen. It's amazing when you when you, when you live in this mantra and live in this pattern. Amen. It's hard for God not to move. When you look at this, there can't be disunity because I'm loving anyway. I'm blessing anyway. I'm doing good to them anyway. I'm praying anyway because all of the things that they, that is listed here, every single thing that comes against us when we come in contact with an enemy, that does not make us want to pray and rejoice and love and, and encourage one another. Amen. When we get cursed at, when someone curses you, you don't know the first thing is you know what I don't want to bless them I'm not going to do any I, I don't want to do anything for them amen when you comes in and they say well they make it very plain that they hate you that does not cultivate or it should not cultivate an atmosphere that God can move in but God said if you'll love like I told you to love and if you'll bless like I told you to bless and you'll do good like I told you to do good and if you'll pray like I told you to pray he said I will bless you mm. good will overcome you it's amazing it cuts the legs out on from underneath evil hey amen when evil comes flooding in I, I I'm sorry I'm just gonna keep pounding on this till I get it in hey amen but when evil comes running in because you know what evil tries to come into the church Amen. The Lord and the scripture says, when, 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 when great uh, sin doth abound, God will, will raise up a standard against it. When sin comes in like a, like a flood, God will raise up a standard against it. You know what that standard is? Is it's teaching to do good. Think about that. The enemy comes in and he thinks, he, he thinks he's got him. Amen. Adam gets a slap in the face. And the enemy's like, ha! I've got him. But yet he sees him still with a spirit of love. I didn't say this was easy. 
But you, but you know what it flows out? It flows out of a relationship with God. This is a guy that got whipped and beat and plucked. It's his beard. He's, he just got just pummeled. And yet he stands, sits on, or stands, sit, he stands on the cross and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. He said, I'm going to love them anyway. I'm going to bless them. You know what? He blessed that day. Did you know that? He blessed them. Because there was a thief to the right, with the right of him that asked for repentance. He said, you know what, bro? Today you're going to be with me in paradise. From the cross, he blessed somebody. From the cross, he loved. Amen. And from the cross, he prayed. And not just for himself, he prayed for those that were despitefully using him. He prayed and he, he asked the Lord to, to, to forgive them. And, and, and he asked the Lord to move. And he said, I'm giving you an example of what to do. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Amen. Because first of all, let's just go there. First Peter chapter 2. Verses 20 through 25, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 20 says this, For what glory is it, if what ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, patiently for this is acceptable with God. He said, you, you, when you get things that come against you and you're buffeted for your, I notice that it's for your faults. When you, when you get attacked for things that are wrong with you, he said, I'm, he said, you shall take it patiently. Patiently. You wait on that. Say, God, I know you're going to bring me through this. That's not where I want to preach, though. Let's keep going. Verse 21 says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps. Jesus said, I'm not doing or asking you to do anything that I'm not willing to do myself. He said, I am leaving you as an example unto you that ye should follow in his steps. Verse 22, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. And when he was suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself that, that or sorry, committed himself to him that judges righteous, righteously. Let me get that up. He didn't retaliate. He didn't respond. He didn't do. And, and so many times we struggle with that because we, we align ourselves with those things. But God said, if you will respond like I respond. He said, I give you the example on the pattern. When you look at the pattern of the Lord's life, he and pattern it after that. Amen. God responded According. Now I know we like to we like to bring up well he went in the temple and he you know he started cleaning house and you know what I and we use that to justify the reality was he did that twice and both times it was because they were contaminating the temple of God. He said, "You've turned my house, the house of prayer." to a den of thieves. You, you've attacked my doctrine. You've attacked and corrupted the very things that I had put in place to save man. You have corrupted them and he responded accordingly. But you don't see him responding that way when he was attacked verbally, when he was attacked physically. The scripture says throughout the crucifixion story that he uttered not a word. Man, that's got to be the hardest thing in the world. He uttered not a word. Why? Because he refused to let evil overshadow the good that he was going. When you look at the cross, you don't see evil anymore. You see the blood of Calvary. You see a resurrection. But it all started. When will evil, when will good win? Good will win when we begin to live the way. We're Christians, right? What's Christians mean? Christ-like. 
to be Christ-like. I, I want to be like Christ. Christ said, I gave you the principles of, of, the, uh, of my teaching to love, to bless, to do good, to pray. And then he said, and then I went and modeled that for you and what you, would, what, what you should desire to do. Because he said, I, I want good to overshadow evil. I, I want good to be prominent. I want good to be on display. I want the goodness of God. David said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I want the goodness of God to be just as prominent in my life as the mercy of God. Amen. I want the, 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 that reflection of who I am in God. That's why the scripture says we're saved by the blood of the Lamb and the the word of our testimony. Our testimony flows out of our ability to do good in this world. Amen. I know we're a fallen man. I know we got flaws and we got things that we don't operate right. But that does not change the, the, our desire and our purpose to say, God, I want good to prevail. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like a, I feel like a hog salesman in Israel right now. <laughs> hey man, it's not popular. It's not easy. But God said that it's effective. It's effective. Let's go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 17. Romans 12 and verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 12, verse 17 says, says this. It says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. I love that. If, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you. In other words, what we got within us gives us the strength and gives us the inner fortitude to keep the peace. It says, dearly beloved, in verse 19, it says, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. I love this scripture because I, I didn't understand it until a little while ago. When it, when it says, but rather give place unto wrath, I thought that was giving me carte blanche. <laughs> but what that's saying is, it says, back off and give God some room. Because he said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And he said, I will, I, I really think that sometimes God can't do his own judgment because we won't get out of his way. And I want you to know that the worst you can do is nothing compared to what God can do. <laughs> and so God said, get back, get out of the way, give room. He says, and because vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That, that, that scripture helped me because you know what? I, I, I just said, you know what, Lord? I'll just leave it with you then. I'm just going to give, I'm going to make room for God. Let God operate. He knows what he's doing. And you know the other thing about God when it comes to vengeance? It's because God knows the whole, this is why it, God reserves, I'm just talking to you tonight. But that's why God reserves vengeance for himself. Because he actually knows the whole story. And sometimes we enact vengeance and we enact judgment when we don't know the whole story. How many times have we had to apologize because we acted without knowing the whole story? I hate that. I, 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 I wish I could say that I didn't do it, but you know what? I haven't. And, and, and so God says, you know what? It's because you're so close. You're so involved. You're so tied into everything and the hurt and the pain and the offense. He said, back off. Give place. To me, he said, and I'll take care. 
about, you know what, I, I, I struggled, it's, I guess maybe because I was young and wanted to, but I struggled with this really young in my ministry and young in my walk with God because I wanted to, I wanted to be the one to, you know, it's I'm no different. Look at the disciples when they were on. He says, Lord, can we call down fire from heaven? And God said, yeah, we could do that. But he said, you know what, just, just knock the dust off your shoes and just go on your way. And he says, and leave them with me because it'd be better if they were in Sodom and Gomorrah than on that day of judgment. That's one thing in this, in this, in you know, for the, I understand it hasn't been somewhat, it's been somewhat informational, this Revelation series. But one thing I picked up a lot from it is simply this. When we were going through the, the seals and the vials and the, and, and the trump, or the, I got that backwards, the seals, the trumpets, and the vials. When I was reading through, what, what got me was just the crazy judgment of God. And I thought, Lord, I'm just going to step back. Because I want him to give mercy where mercy is due. Because he knows the end from the beginning. He knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And God, if I can make room for you, I remain good. It's like Paul. I was preaching too long and the kid almost fell out of the root or out of the window. He just fell on the floor. Do I need to pray him back? It'll be okay. Let's keep going here. The Lord said, I will repay, saith the Lord. Go to verse 20. I'd cry too if I hit my head like that. It says, verse 20, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he's thirst, give him to drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. See, we miss this sometimes. You know what? Just do good. Feed them if they're hungry. Give them something to drink if they're thirsty. Sustain them. Why? Because they know how you should react. It's like old Paul when he got bit by the viper. They looked at him and said, that guy's an evil guy. He's going to die. Look at that. The, he survived a, a shipwreck and now the enemy has, he's so bad and he's so evil that, 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 that karma came around and bit him again and, oh, watch him. He's going to puff up and die. And then a few scriptures later, they're saying, Paul, oh, man, he's a god. <laughs> he's a god. Why were they saying that? Because he did not respond the way that they expected him to respond. And when that happened, they changed their mindset. You know, nothing will change a, a family. I always tell people who are living uh, in, a, in a home where uh, that they may be an only spouse or maybe they're a child in an unsaved home and it's a struggle. And I always tell them, do good. Live in obedience to God's word. And you know what happens? And they are seeing how they would respond. And it's not how you're responding. And that confuses them. And the way they said, Paul said it in Romans, he said, as a matter of fact, it's like throwing coals of fire on his head. In other words, it's, it, 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 when you're doing good to them, evil is, is becoming, uh, is, is attacked when you do good. Because when good flows out of you, when your testimony flows out, when the goodness of God, nothing will change and flow in a community when they see goodness. When we act like they act or worse, guess what? That's not goodness flowing. 
And instead of heaping coals on top of their head, we're empowering them in the spiritual realm. But when goodness flows out of us, when we don't, when they don't deserve our love, and we love them anyway, Amen. When they curse at us, and we and we bless them, Amen. I, 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 I it, it was interesting. I can't. I won't tell all the details, but 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 I, I ran into a situation where, where where they were so so overwhelmingly nasty against the church and against. This and, 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 and I couldn't wait for the opportunity and God gave me an opportunity and I was able to bless them and, 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 and to bring a blessing into their life and they didn't say thank you they didn't say anything because they couldn't say nothing they just stood there and you know what happened? It filtered around a little bit later on and, and it said you know what? Uh, this person was, was actually saying something good about your church they, 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 were, they were saying this, they were saying that. But it all came with God. I want, this is what's amazing. This is what's amazing. You ready for this? God's going to give you opportunities to put this into action. <laughs> God's going to God's gonna put someone in your life that's not going to be easy to love. And he's going to say, Adam, love him anyway. He's on the front row, so I have to pick on him only tonight. Just love them. That person that curses you and, you, and, and, and is nasty, and, and he's expecting to see you turn your nose up at him or snarl at him or say something bad about him. You know what? And you don't? Guess what? It just, what is happening? Good is starting to prevail. Good is starting to win. Hey Amen. And, and, and when good starts to prevail, evil starts to to, to, to falter and evil starts to crack and evil starts to break. Why? Because he said, Lord, deliver me from evil. God said, I'm going to deliver you from evil by giving you the principles with which to live by. You want to be delivered from evil? You let me help you love people. You want to be delivered from evil? Let me help you bless people. We want to be delivered from evil? Let me help you do good to those that despitefully use you and brings you right back to D, which is pray. If you want to do, overcome evil, you better start praying because prayer is what ties it all together. Prayer brings you to a place where you can love somebody that you, could, you couldn't love before. Amen. Prayer brings you to a place where you can bless somebody that doesn't deserve your blessing or do good to those that don't deserve it. Amen. Prayer brings us into contact with God that allows good to flow from us. Hallelujah. And lastly, I wish I could hang out there. Because verse 21 says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Paul said, you know what? If you don't employ... See, this is, this is why I feel like God put it on my heart so heavy. If we don't employ these... Evil will overcome you. You say, well, I'm, I'm, I haven't killed anybody. I but you know what? Our spirit can kill other people. Our, that, that overcoming, that evil, I can, I can do evil things and, and, and still hold on to my, quote unquote, in our, my own mind, salvation. But God, but, but the scripture says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Lord, let your good flow out of me. Amen. There's none good within me. The scripture says, as a matter of fact, there's none good but God. He said, don't call anybody else good. There's none good but God. That's why my righteousness is as filthy rags. It's not good. But when I put on the righteousness of God, when his goodness is following me, when his mercy is following me, it flows out of me. It gives me the strength to love somebody. It gives me the ability to bless. It'll, it'll give me the strength to do good. And the desire and the need of prayer. If you live this way, nobody's going to have to tell you to pray. <laughs> if you want to shout, get last Tuesday's tape. It'll help you shout on the way home. But 
But if, 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 you, if, you, if you employ the goodness of God. Don't worry, I'll get to my last scripture in a minute. I just got one more scripture. But, but when you begin to employ these, you're going to see your need to pray. Because Brother Shane, I don't feel like living this way all the time. But yet, when I, this is so amazing to me, and, and, and the Lord, maybe it's the Lord working on me, because what amazes me is when, 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 I, when I feel, what I have found is when I, when I am praying the way that I sh should be praying, and God allows one of these situations to come up to me, I want to respond, but I'm so thankful. Brother Adam, I'm so thankful for the convicting power of God. I love it when, when I'm so thankful for the, the, the presence and power of God. Because when I want to speak, if I haven't been in the presence of God, if I haven't been praying, if I haven't seen, it, it, it flows. But, but if I can, but if I can, I love it when I feel that twinge and that, 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 that and I call it the knife. I don't know what anybody else calls it, but when, 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 when I start to go and I, feel that knife in my spirit. And it tells me, not good. I say, feels good. God says, not good. But I said, oh, but it feels so good. You know what happened? I, I, me and God have so many arguments, but I'm so thankful that he are, he's willing to argue with me. Because he, he should just smack me. But he argues with me. And he always wins, though. It's like I'm arguing with my wife. Always wins. <laughs> Hi, there's a few still awake. Good. Okay. But prayer, I want you to know, prayer will give you the, the strength and give you the ability. It's amazing. When I see people grow spiritually, I see this, these principles start to flow more freely. It's amazing when you begin to see how good begins to flow and how good begins to... Oh, I've seen people turn their whole family around because they just were determined to do good. Amen. I've seen them go home. I, I was actually uh, reading a, a testimony, and I can't remember if it was the Herald or where it was, but it was a young lady who, when she, she was a Muslim lady, who came in and got baptized in Jesus' name, and she went home, and when she went home, her family, family literally beat her in her home so much so that she she carried scars and every time she went home from church she would get beaten every and this is not a young girl this is somebody a girl who's uh, you know between uh, probably 16 and and 20 throughout this period of time and she just would refuse to 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 say a nasty thing she would not fight back she would not would not say a cross word. She wouldn't, she wouldn't belittle them. She wouldn't, you know, take her bat out and beat their religion. She would just love them. And she talks about how she loves, she would just love them and she would bless them and she would do good to them and she would pray for them and she said, I would walk into the house and I would be, know that a beating was coming, but she said I would be praying for my family when I walked up the stairs and God has saved her entire family but she went through a lot of seasons of hardships and hard times, but the good of God begin to overcome evil I want you to know when we begin I'm not saying we got to go get beat every day but I want to know if we're willing to do good if you're willing to love if you're willing to bless if you're willing to pray because that implements the power of God to work some say why is evil seemingly overcoming why is evil always flowing I'm here to tell you it's because we're not allowing the good to be flow out of our spirit. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. 
who is good with God being reflected in our spirit. And I end with this, 1 Peter. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Hatamahakiyat. Amen, 1 Peter. Actually, we can all stand. I'm going to be done. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse number 8 says this, Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be, be pitiful and be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil or rallying for rallying, but counterwise blessing. Knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. The goodness that flows out of you is a prelude to a blessing that God has for you. I believe that so many times God can't bless us like he wants to because we've not allowed the blessings to flow out. That's why he said, not rendering evil for evil or rallying for or railing for railing, but what? But counter what? Blessing. He says, but do the opposite. Do the counter of that. Instead of doing evil for evil, bless somebody. He said, and when you bless, ooh, when you bless, I like this. Knowing that ye are there unto called. You know what he was saying? He says, bless. Because you know that you're called to do so. And he said, and once you've done what you know to do. Am I preaching tonight anything that nobody's ever heard before? I hope not. I hope this is... And we've all heard this before. But I'm hoping, i just hoping that I'm trying to strike a chord in somebody tonight. Because he said, but to do the opposite and bless. Because, he know, because you know that you're called thereunto. We know what God has called us to do. We know what God has called us to do. And he said that ye should, in, I love this, inherit a blessing. It's not receive a blessing, but it's inherit a blessing. Lord, that I, I, I can inherit something that I really don't necessarily deserve. But because I have stepped into relation with you. Because I have been obedient to you. I have received or I have inherited a blessing from you. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like the blessings of God. Christ died for me. And when he died for me, I know we're not saved by works. Okay? And don't misunderstand what I'm saying right now by saved by works. But when he died, his blessings were put in trust for me. And when I... And when I live in obedience and accordance and submitted to his directive... It releases that trust. And it, that's why it's an inheritance. That you're called, that you should inherit a blessing. When I have, oh my goodness, I wish I could preach that. When I have fulfilled the requirements of the will. Sometimes if it's a trust, you can't get it to your 21. I just set up a will uh, for my, my, our family 
just a week ago, and, and we had to pick the dates, and we, we could put on stipulations onto our will that they couldn't receive unless this, 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 and this were taken. You know what God did? God gave us Matthew. <laughs> he gave us our scripture that we just read in 1 Peter. He gave us our scripture in Romans. And he says, and when you fulfill them, you'll inherit a blessing. I want you to know that's why some people have in churches, some people have blessings that other people don't have. I know that that's kind of pointed. But it's because it's an inheritance. And until we step to that place of obedience and fulfillment, it doesn't release. Now, I'm not, don't misunderstand. I'm not talking about salvation. But you know what? I'm so thankful that there's blessings beyond salvation. When was good going to win? Good's going to win when we step into a place of obedience to Him. And we live by his principles. We live by his example. We live by his word. Right. And God will allow God to bless us, bless our church, bless our community. Right. As the goodness of God overcomes the evil of this world. Yes. Aren't you thankful for that tonight? Oh, Let's just lift our hearts, our hands. Let's just thank the Lord together right now. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I obeyed you tonight. Lord, I obeyed your directive. Lord, I pray that your spirit would... Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let your spirit... Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Lord, let your spirit flow through us today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah.